Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to put a climbing net on this playground. I know I can already hear it now. I don't model climbing nets. What am I going to learn from this? Valid, very valid point. But as usual, when we make these videos, we try to come up with something that uh, is, is easy to understand, clearly illustrates some modeling topics, and then teaches you something. So I don't ever plan to never plan to have to model <laughs> something like this, but uh, I did find it had some cool things that we learned. I learned about follow me's components, um, uh, welding, arcs, a whole bunch of things came out of this. So uh, even though you might not have to do anything like this in your day to day job, I recommend giving this a shot because it is a pretty cool model and a good learning experience. So let's hop right in. Okay, so here's our playground. We did this last time or a while ago. We did some slides, straight slide and then a curvy slide. We're going to come in now and we're going to do just a climbing net right off of this side. So what I want to do is I want to have one, two, three, four ropes come down and just kind of come down and angle out, you know, so it'll be wider at the bottom than it is at the top. Um, and then I want to do, you know, three or four rungs across like that. And I want to have it attach up underneath here. So I'm going to start with an edge across here. This is a group, so I don't want to mess with that geometry. So I'm going to draw this edge and I'm going to divide it right now. And I said I want four pieces coming down, so that means five total segments. One, so there'll be one here. Um, I'm going to start with this piece right here. I'm going to drop down. I'm going to inference to the bottom of this column, this post, and then have it come out about that far-ish. So not a real specific, not a real hard uh, geometry thing here. Just kind of looks good, looks good. Um, so what I want to do is I want to have this rope drop vertically and then kind of come out like that. So it'll be vertical for a little while and then it will slope out. So I'm going to grab an arc, come part way down like that, and then bring that out like that. Perfect. That's what I'm looking for. So my rope's going to slope down and then out. All right. Um, up here, I can actually get rid of a lot of these edges. This edge on the over here is me thing. I do need this edge and this and this to all go into a component. And I'm gonna just call this my row. I should call my vertical. You know, it's not tr totally vertical, but you know, it goes up and down. It's an up and down row, but that kind of vertical. I'm gonna say create that. And then I can actually get rid of the rest of these edge segments over here. I don't need those. All right, now I'm gonna take this piece. I'm gonna go option, move to the end of here, 2x, is going to give me, no, sorry, 3x. It's going to give me four total pieces. Looks pretty good. I don't need this extra, I can come in here and get rid of some extra geometry. Now I don't need these two lines. I don't need that line. That's all I need. Um, actually, go back in there again. And I should probably also weld this. I'm going to grab all the edges. So it's just, it's one arc and a vertical edge. And I will grab those and click weld real quick. Nice. All right. Now, they look good, but they're vertical. Like I said, I want this to kind of spread out at the bottom. So I'm going to grab this first one. I'm going to hit rotate. I'm going to go to the top point and hit the up arrow to lock in that vertical axis. Click right here and then rotate it like 20 degrees. Do the same thing on this one right here. Rotate right here, up axis, click here, bring that out 20 degrees. That looks good. These ones need a little bit of a, a turn too. So I'm going to grab this one up, click here, go like, I don't know, more than that, like seven degrees, seven degrees, seven degrees is perfect. I meant to do seven degrees all along. All right, up arrow, lock that inference here, seven degrees. Cool. Those are my horizontal ropes. I'm not going to leave them as just edges like this. We're going to do a follow me to put, uh, you know, some, some width on the rope. But before I do that, while I still have just edges, I want to put my rungs on here. So I'm going to come in here, click right here, come over here and maybe drop down a little like that, go straight across and then come back up. There we go. I'm going to grab those, right click and make that into a group. I don't make a component here because there's only, only going to be, these will all be different. Each one will be a little bit different size. So um, let's see, we'll go up about that same amount here to here here, up to here, grab those, right click, make them another group, and then one more. So on this one we'll go here, right, and then 
that's actually a straight line because that's all those vertical edges all lined up. So maybe we should put a little bit of a, just a little bit of a droop in those lines instead. There we go. Looks a little better. Now we'll grab those three edges and make that a group. All right. Now we're almost there. So that's that's looking good. This is this is kind of the spider web look. This is all super thin, just just edges, no geometry. So not good for final, but for right now that works. So let's go in and add some uh, some rope to these edges. So I'm going to grab a circle, go here on the top. My normal circle side is 24. I'm going to use one that's 12. Um, so I'm just going to grab right here. I'm going to come at like 0.5 inches from my radius. Uh, it's going to give us a one inch piece of material. And then I welded this edge so I can select it, follow me, click on my one inch circle. There we go. Perfect. So I have those pieces of rope coming down. Oh, that's, that's just right. All right. I'm going to come into this piece. I'm going to grab this, right click. I'm going to say weld edges. I'm going to draw a circle right here. Draw it vertically like this, say 0.5, there we go. And then I can just say, follow me, and click here, and there we go, get the next rope. Looking good. Um, so something to point out, I did not make this rope, this circle perfect, because I didn't make the edge perpendicular, exactly perpendicular to the line it was following. But really for this, I think it's going to be OK. I mean, it is a rope. Ropes are not perfect circles anyhow. so. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to lose sleep over that one. I'm um, going to go ahead and weld these again. Another circle right here, 0.5, follow me, click, and then one more, come in here again, select all these. Nothing helps cement in a workflow by do, like doing it over and over again, you know? So uh, yeah, I got this one locked down now, 0.5, enter. Follow me, click. All right, there we go. So that looks pretty cool. In fact, if that was my final result, I'd be pretty happy with that. But I want to go a little bit further. Um, I was looking at a playground near us, and they had they had something like this, and then they had like these actual like spheres that covered the connection points. Um, I thought that looked kind of cool, and I figured out you know how would I do that. So I did it, and we're gonna do it. So I'm going to start with a circle on the ground. I'm just going to kind of draw a circle. It doesn't matter how big, bigger than bigger than I need it to be, basically. And I'm going to draw a vertical circle from the center. And this one is going to be like two inch radius, so four inches right there. And then I'll grab the outside circle, say, follow me, and click this inside circle, and then get rid of the outside circle. I take that, make that into a component. Um, I got you real quick. There we go. And then make component, and we'll just call that my sphere. All right. Now I'm going to take this. I'm going to edit and cut it. Not copy, but cut. And then I'm going to go in the context of this one piece. And I'm going to paste. And what I want to do is I want to actually put this onto this rope but I want to put it right where that other piece comes along. Right now, my view, I have a uh, component edit hide rest of model turned on. I'm going to turn that off. That way, I can now take this circle and put it on top of here. So I'm just going to slide it over this way. Let's slide it back this way. Let's slide over this way. And I am realizing this is not going to work perfectly because the intersection points for these other pieces are a little off, but we'll figure out how to fix that in just a few seconds. All right, that looks good. So I'm going to go Option and move that one up to here. A little fine tuning move. Um, you can see I'm using a relative move. I'm not actually clicking on geometry, move it around. I'm clicking in the background to just scoot it. And then I will also use the arrow keys to lock as I move it. Perfect. That's good. Oop, no, it's got to come out a little bit more. There we go. All right, I'm going to grab that option. And one more right up here. All right, slide that over. Slide that forward. Ooh, got a little jumpy. Slide that back. Um, that looks perfect. All right, now if I come out here, 
these two are going to be different at this point so they're all the same but if i want to make a change just to these two if i select both of them at the same time and click make unique what i can do is i can come in here and edit just one and you'll see the other one gets changed along with it so these two are now new connected components so they will the same changes made to one will affect the other but not the previous ones because the previous ones were a different component that has now been made unique but because i grabbed two of them at the same time now all edits done in one of them shows up the same way in the next one so good tip for uh making changes the biggest thing with making changes to components is making sure you're ready for that that change to happen does that mean like if i'd done this earlier on i would have had to do follow me's on mo more than one piece of these so that sort of thing making sure you're at the spot where the geometry is ready to be abandoned as far as making additional changes all right, now that I got all that, I'm going to go ahead and grab everything. I'm going to put that into a group. And then I'm going to slide that group just back so it's under the lip. That is what I want from my rope ladder. Looking pretty cool. All right, so like I said, you may not have to make rope ladders or rope nets or climbing nets or this looks like a piece of rigging from a pirate ship maybe none of that stuff may be something you use regularly but i wanted to show you just kind of some different ways to use components and use geometry you might not normally do uh, a few weeks ago we did a thing on moving from beginner to intermediate to master sketchup modeler and one of the things i, I pointed out was you know, learning to model things you don't normally model. And this, this one fell squarely outside of my realm of things I normally model. So I figured I would pass it along. Try to expand your horizons and your modeling abilities. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week around here and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. More importantly than that though, leave us a comment down below. What did you think of that? Can you think of something else that you were not quite sure how to model you'd like help with? Leave that down in the comments. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.